Hello, I am Fantastic and Fantastic, and today I'm going to talk about the EVA collab that has come back to North America after a prolonged absence. So due to the fact that it's been several years since it has come around last time, all of the cards have been reworked and restructured to try and bring them up to speed with currently available options. And in fact, all of the five stars except for one of the cards and five, six, seven stars total will actually have weapon assist, which does grant much more usage for these cards overall. But unfortunately, there are four star cards still in existence and these four star cards will actually comprise over 50 percent of the rolling pool and despite the fact that all of the four star cards have super resist so they have either 100 percent protection against blind jammer or poison they are still quite lackluster because they basically are just the bare minimum the vast majority of those cards if you're a brand new player sure you might fill in a hole in your monster box and cover a certain resist but there are many other ways to find resistance nowadays and as soon as you acquire a different option or alternative, you will quickly drop those EVA cards because they don't do anything except for that super resist. And with that in mind, I don't feel it's even worth it for even brand new players to roll because those cards will be quickly replaced if you roll in like just regular super godfests or more valuable seasonals and collabs. So as a whole, I feel like this event is definitely not worth rolling in. There are still several cards sprinkled throughout the event that are strong, but even with the five magic stone rolling, cost it still doesn't justify the fact that many many of these cards are going to be these four star rarities and even several of the five star cards i don't think are that magical and you only have a nine percent chance for a diamond egg like that's these are pretty distressing overall and for the most part i am not impressed but at the same time i still plan to at least go over all the cards to outline their pros and cons and potential usage so, as I mentioned before, despite the fact that all of these bottom rarity cards have a super resist, they don't offer much else overall, and as a result, I don't feel like it's worth pursuing for them that reason, and I'll look at those in more greater detail, but this is just a quick little summary if you'd like to just see what the bottom rarity has from at least an awakening point of view. So let's just jump right into it. So the first card in this event is Shinji and Rei. And this is a brand new seven star card. Basically all these cards kind of feel new, but this is technically a new, new card. And in their base form, they are a relatively generic triple seven combo card. Like triple seven combo was the hallmark of a great card years ago, but it's just not anything special at this point in time. They do offer tremendous amounts of effective health for their leader skill, but again, this leader skill is nothing truly sensational. If anything, like a newer player, if they were fortunate enough to roll it from their free roll, definitely could take advantage of this. You get bonus movement time, you get an easy to activate, only needs six combos for your full activation. So it's easy to use, but at the same time, if something is that easy to use, they don't necessarily come with extra zest. And that is the case here. There's no like bonus combo, seven by six or auto follow-up attack. And the multipliers themselves are all right. Obviously with a heavier emphasis on effective health, but a generalist tends to not be the greatest card out there nowadays just because we have hundreds of different options and we have highly specialized cards that can fulfill basically any role. And if you just do a bit of everything reasonably well, it's going to be hard to stand out. But thankfully, their weapon assist, no, sorry, their evolved form has numerous applications in the future. So in the future, there will be a brand new dungeon release called Shura Realm. It might have a slightly different name when it's actually translated, but basically this is going to be the next hardest level content and it features numerous or numerous machine type spawns. And as a result, Shinji and Rei in their evolved form have triple machine killers. They can take any killer latent so they can take machine killers so they can do comically high amounts of damage against machine type spawns. They also provide you a super jam resist and as a leader they're actually not too bad. I did mention before that this leader skill here was not that spectacular because like most of it's just effective health and the attack multipliers are okay but the reason why this leader skill has a bit more potential is, well, the effective health is tremendously high, it's easy to heal up, and it's going to have relevance in Shura Realm, because you are so durable and hard to kill, you can stall through quite a few problematic encounters, so to speak, like it's going to be somewhat difficult to actually kill this team when you fully activate, and you can pump out tremendous amounts of damage with these machine killers. Furthermore, their active skill is a six turn full rainbow board changer with no one turn no skyfalls and a small attack buff, so it can overwrite any attack debuff, overwrite any no skyfall clauses, and it's just fast and easy to charge up, so you can definitely inherit something else over top of it. So 
Again, the value of this card here will definitely improve when Shore Realm does arrive. It's kind of a weird thing. We can see ahead in the future for North America, so to speak. So certain cards that may not have been so amazing will end up being more valuable later on. A good example is Dante from Devil May Cry. If we didn't know Remy was going to ever come out or existed, his value would have obviously been a little less amazing because there was no perfect pairing, but we have the benefit of actually being able to look ahead into the future. But the main drawback with this card is, well, naturally you only have damage against machine type spawns, so obviously the types of content you want to bring them into should be carefully planned out. And they do technically have a lower attack multiplier for the leader skill if you use them in that context, and they are just featured in a relatively weak rare machine. Like, it's not something you necessarily want to roll, and I don't necessarily feel it's worth trading for. And despite the fact that this weapon assist does provide interesting amounts of value, I still feel like it's missing a little bit of something. So for this weapon assist, you get a single skill boost for the Awakenings, and not much else really. Their active skill is a 12 turn cooldown that provides you with two turns of haste, as well as the ability to fully heal your health and remove all unable to match orb effects by unlimited number of turns. So the idea is with this weapon assist is that you have three effective skill boosts if you utilize it on a card who has a low enough base cooldown to be charged up in time. And if this obviously provides a certain amount of value because in a transforming meta, you need to find creative ways to bring enough skill boost as well as counteract all the other mechanics in the dungeon. Through a weapon assist and getting three effective skill boosts is relatively uncommon, and it still actually has a useful effect afterwards. Like, as for the most part, this weapon assist is heavily front loaded. If you utilize this active at the beginning of the dungeon, most of the value is found there. But at least later on, if it does charge up again, you have the ability to remove all unable to match orb effects, which has no true counter otherwise you have to use an active skill to overcome this and the main drawback of this like i said is it's a very front loaded weapon assist it won't provide that much value for the rest of the dungeon and another thing i want to point out at least for the context of a altarina 4 is that if you rely on this weapon assist for your effective skill boost you won't have it ready for floor 3 which does have an unable to match hard orb mechanic so if that's the case you have to either bring an active skill that would counter that. You don't use the haste on floor one, which is kind of like the main appeal for this weapon assist, or you have a team that can fully activate without hearts as well as having auto follow-up attack. There are definitely workarounds, but just be aware that if you're playing something like say Yomi Norza who needs hard orbs to activate and you only brought this option as you're unable to match orb effect and you plan to use them for skill boosts, you're gonna have a problem. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Like, this is kind of like Lena in versus weapon in the sense that it provides skill boost, haste, and whatnot, but Lena's weapon at least provides tape resist, so it has value throughout the rest of the dungeon. Now we come to the six star cards, and Eva Unit 01 has tremendous damage output. They have double VDP, double seven combo, and a God Killer Awakening alongside of four skill boosts. This is a jam packed offensive card overall, and it's shine great on any mono dark team. In addition to that, their active skill has the ability to reduce Awoken Binds by two turns and then create two water and dark orbs. So your mono dark teams are going to be tremendously happy. You can easily inherit something over top of this guy, such as Shinji and Rei's weapon assist if you really wanted those skill boosts. This is a good example for it. You'd have to have at least 14 skill boosts across the team, use Shinji and Rei's active, get two more haste, transform things right away. It's kind of the applications for having a low base cooldown. And in addition to that, the God Killer is relevant because God type spawns are currently, at least in Alterina 4, the most dangerous encounters you will face. And having a tremendously strong hard hitting card is meaningful alongside of the fact that it has a short cooldown and many skill boosts. The main problem with this card is you have to roll it. You can't actually monster exchange for them, which is definitely problematic. And I feel just because of the way Mono Dark is currently structured, they have less ideal teams to be used on. Because maybe it's me being biased. I don't even have Yugi, but like Yugi tends to dominate Mono Dark. It's just like if you were going to run a Mono Dark team, Yugi is just more efficient. He brings so much to the table. And Unit 01 can't be utilized there. Sure, you could utilize them as a leader, but it won't be as effective. You can't utilize them as a sub on those teams either. But it's just a little problematic. Like you have to, you can basically have a team with this leader is basically like an old Phenom Ina style team in the sense that you want to have three or more colors matched in order to get your damage reduction 
as well as your full multiplier and your blob combos. So you're kind of like playing an older Phenom Ina team, but the problem is like you have to make sure you have at least three colors, which can cut down on activation potential with certain board changers. And it's just a little bit more hassle to try and juggle, so to speak. And also the fact that it only adds plus one combo, it may or may not be enough depending on who you pair with, but I still think it's a reasonably interesting card. And if the meta ever shifts out of Yugi, like a better mono dark leader comes out that can utilize this card, unit 01 will definitely climb in value significantly. It's just the fact that right now they're not able to be utilized by what is the best dark leader at this point in time. Thankfully, if that is the we never get a mono dark leader for the foreseeable future, they have a strong and powerful weapon assist because their weapon assist provides you a tape resist, 60% jammers, a little bit of orb enhance, and an active skill that removes all awoken binds unlocks the board and then changes all orbs to fire, water, and dark. So you have a board changer, and I'm gonna presume you have auto fall of attack and whatever team is being utilized for this. So you have a tricolor board changer, can fully remove awoken binds, and you have tape and triple jam resist. A pretty well jam packed weapon assist overall. And if I were fortunate enough to roll unit one, I'd be happy with either form. I could switch between the two. I'd probably utilize the weapon assist more, at least in the interim, and then I can always convert it back into his base form if I find a better place to utilize them on. The next card in the six star category is Miru. And Miru in this form has the ability to gain super blind resist. They have big multipliers, but the problem is you have to match you have to have exactly five hard orbs and you are going to have a little problem with that because if you think about it, you have no effective health without a heart cross. So you must, you must, you must always have five, or five hard orbs present. Otherwise, your life is going to be quite terrible. You also want to try and obviously pair with someone who has auto follow up attack because trying to make a follow up attack column requires 10 hard orbs because the column of five and the cross of five. It's just an orb hungry mechanism overall. It doesn't perform that well because you are going to have to stall. You're going to have to take hits. And if you have to constantly be using active skills over and over again, you're not actually going to probably have enough counters for all the obnoxious mechanics that can be thrown at you. So it's not to say it's a terrible leader. It's just that it's going to be impractical to move over to utilize overall, but at the same time, I feel that her weapon assist is wonderfully powerful. And if I were to obviously roll her, I would switch the weapon assist without a hesitation because their weapon assist provides you with cloud resist as well as a single jammer, poison, and blind. So you have 20% resist to those metrics and full cloud resist and an active skill that's actually amazingly strong. You get a column of hard orbs and you reduce unable to match orb effects by all their turns and remove all awoken skill binds. This is pretty similar to the Shano's weapon assist in the sense that their active skill provides a very similar counter to two awoken binds and unable to match or effects. And these awakenings are quite powerful. Maybe I'm undervaluing this card. Maybe it's actually a bit stronger than I really give it credit for. But the reason why this weapon assist is going to be quite powerful is because when we do get the Samurai 3 weapon assist, which should happen now to soon or whatnot they provide you with one skill boost and four of the resists of either four jammer four poison or four blind so if you utilize mirrors weapon assist with the samurai three weapon assist you'd have cloud resist you'd have a skill boost you have a hundred percent protection against one of those metrics and then 20 percent against the two others so you have multiple creative ways to basically cover resist now you don't only have to rely on super resist with this type of weapon assist in conjunction with Samurai 3. It could then in turn open up some team building options. It also means you don't always have to rely on Fagan Rai for your cloud resist because that tends to be the best way to get cloud resist. And this is definitely an alternative. So if I were fortunate enough to roll this card, I would definitely convert to the weapon assist because I don't have a truly exceptional solution for unable to match orb effects outside of Mystic Elf, which does have some restrictions to itself. The next is Kali for the EVA collab, and Kali in their base form, they're a relatively generic standard rainbow sub. They have guard break to overcome high defense, low attack, high defense, low health spawns. They have potentially triple seven combo, but they might just take the super jam resist. But the problem is like they have some TPAs, which probably gonna be underutilized. The soft bind clear, like that's an awakening that was great five years ago, but nowadays basically everything is bind immune. So it's a little redundant to have that awakening for the most part. So there's a couple of dead awakenings and they're just, like I said, a relatively generic 
rainbow sub. It's nothing bad about it. It's just nothing exceptional. In terms of the active skill, it provides you with a full rainbow board changer, so all six elements, as well as four turns of a small attack boost. And that attack boost can definitely overwrite any attack debuff. But again, you're paying 10 turns for it. It's kind of long. It's a like you're basically adding on, I think, three turns to a Dark Cali style board changer in order to have this extra attack buff. Depending on how important it is to have rainbow boards on a regular basis, that may or may not be an issue. If this form feels unappealing to you, their weapon assist might might have some value, but at the same time, I feel like it's only okay because it offers a skill boost and then one enhanced orb of every color. Now, the problem with that is you can't concentrate your damage. It's only a 20% chance for that orb to fall down enhanced. And it may be obviously utilized on rainbow teams, but the orb that falls down may be a color of something that doesn't even hit hard, so it's kind of being wasted. Like, if it was, say, a skill boost and three enhanced Dark Orb Awakenings, it'd be much more meaningful because, well, it has applications for Mono Dark teams, but if you build a Rainbow team and you end up have you focus your damage-oriented cards with Dark types, those Orb Enhances end up playing a bigger value overall because at this point in time, we have so many different alternatives for skill boost weapons that we want to make sure that the extra effect that comes alongside of it provides something more meaningful. In terms of the active skill that comes with this weapon, they have one turn of three times RCV, unlock the board, and then changes all orbs to all elements. I think this is a reasonably strong active. It doesn't have as long of a cooldown, and that RCV buff will overwrite any existing debuff. But at the same time, this card, I feel, is just reasonably okay. It's not truly exceptional. Now we come to the five-star cards, and this individual here is the only five-star card without a weapon assist but they come with an orb skin so you can directly purchase them and they do have an interesting kit overall. They have potentially three VDPs, two God Killers, as well as Tape Resist, but a bunch of L's and those L's are definitely going to kill his potential. One L would have been great if those two other L's were basically any other Awakening, he would be much more powerful overall. But Thankfully, he still has tremendous god-killing potential, especially when you form that 3x3 box. And their active skill provides you with an orb movement time self-debuff, but that means it also overwrites any existing debuff as well. And a loss of a single second shouldn't break you overall, considering the fact that he changes the far right column to dark orbs. So, for a 3-turn cooldown, you can overwrite any existing time debuff and potentially generate up to 5 dark orbs on 6x5. Pretty high value active skill overall. In terms of their leader skill, they have fixed 8 seconds of orb movement time. And 8 seconds of orb movement time means you are immune to time debuff, so it's kind of a weird thing. His active skill overwrites those things, but he's immune to it as a leader. It's a weird synerg anti-synergy, so to speak, with itself. But I guess the fact that it is a self-debuff means you are able to get a shorter base cooldown. In addition to that, you need to utilize balance type cards, so... You are, restrictive, you are restricting yourself to what you can actually bring, but you get... 100,000 worth of auto fall of attack damage when you match five or more dark orbs, so you don't have to row, and you get your rest of your multiple, well, you get the whole multiplier when you match five or more dark orbs. So you're a mono dark leader that has to use balance types, which does have a reasonably strong sub pool. Basically, anything you use on your Yugi Nell team could be utilized here, so to speak, because they all had a balance typing. But again, we just came to that same problem. We're using basically the same subs potentially as on Yugi Nell teams, but Yugi and Nell will just perform that much better. So I feel like in terms of of like a leader skill niche that they could fill is not really there. Like V is another fixed eight second movement time leader who pairs with Yugi, and that's a much spicier potential team overall compared to this individual paired with someone else. So I feel like Yugi has definitely kind of shut down, so to speak, many of the mono dark possibilities because he just does everything so much better at this point in time. And that is the orb skin you are able to potentially acquire with them. Sheet is still sheety from this event. They have many TPAs, but there's no really great place to utilize TPA. TPA is an awkward performing awakening. Like it requires basically the team to only utilize TPA. It needs a solution for voids as well, because making a VDP requires nine, then a TPA alongside is 13. It's just orb hungry overall. It's impractical. Too many awakenings are taken up by this relatively lackluster offensive awakening. Because when you think about it, TPA only adds 1.5 times attack. Seven combos, attack while below 50%, add two times. Significantly better output from those, as well as, in my opinion, just easier to activate requirements. So TPA definitely needs a work, and Sheet is still going to be Sheety.
In terms of her weapon assist, she provides two enhanced water orbs, so some passive damage for your mono water teams, and an orb changer that generates water orbs and takes away hearts to make dark, as well as four turns of damage reduction. So it's okay, but the thing is, two enhanced water orbs is not that magical. A single jam resist and a single color resist is not going to really change your team composition. And if you really want to sprinkle in passive damage for your team, something like the Farnable Helen from the Gung Ho Pally machine provides the same number of orb enhances as well as an attack wall above 50%. There are many other weapon assists with enhanced water orbs that provide more enhanced water orbs. It's just like the thing is with pad, there are so many cards available, and if you're not at least unique or at least keeping up with current options, you are going to feel lackluster, and that is definitely the case for Sheet. And similar idea can be said for Yamato for this event. They do have four skill boosts, they do have many rows, they do have, I guess, super follow attack and combo orb, but they're mostly going to be finding themselves as potentially like an interim aid to helping transform, like you do have an orb changer and four skill boosts, not the worst thing. Or on farming teams where you want to actually have enough skill boosts and some passive damage. Like, it's not that they are terrible or anything, they just are not truly unique or special. They're not standing out or doing anything magical. And the same thing can be said for their weapon assist. It's very similar to Sheet's weapon assist in the sense that it's two enhanced orbs, random resist, and a random blind resist but i find 20 percent blind resist is a little bit better and at least for fire there are fewer options for fire orb enhances whereas water had many more things available but at the same time it's still a relatively low value weapon assist in my opinion next is series and series actually is much stronger by comparison in her base form she has some team health she has double seven combo she can get cloud resist a reasonable mono a reasonable sub overall and their active skill provides you have a heal okay but it provides a full awoken and bind clear as well as a small attack buff so you can clear binds and awoken binds get a nice little attack buff overwrite those problems and you have reasonable bulk reasonable damage cloud resist not a bad card by any means but I feel that her weapon assist has much more value overall because with her weapon assist she does get three enhanced wood orbs which is better than two compared to the ones above hand, but the active skill that comes with this weapon assist is actually powerful. You are able to reduce all unable to match orb effects by five turns, and then reduce all awoken skill binds by five turns, as well as four turns of damage reduction. That's quite a few wonderful things happening within a single card. Like, if you do not have any other possible solution for buying, um, like, you don't have many options for clearing unable to match orb effects, Pairing it up with your Awoken Bind Clear is pretty helpful because against Odin Dragon and Ultramina 4, you counter all of his nasty mechanics right away. You have s solid amounts of passive damage from Mono Wood teams. With that being said, of course, this weapon assist does truly shine best on Mono Wood, and Mono Wood, like, they're in a bit of an awkward place. There's no truly stellar standout teams. There are definitely things that can work, but nothing as magical as what we have available for basically every other color, so to speak. So this is a strong weapon assist. If you do get series as your five-star card, definitely make her into the weapon assist. In terms of Leyland for the Eva collab, she is just okay. Like you have Rose, you have VDP, you can have potentially three skill boosts or a cloud resist. Like it's not terrible. You also get two turns of haste. So you do have potentially five effective skill boosts if you want. And I feel like, again, she just would be more of like an interim card, so to speak. Like, if you need something to help you transform, you could stick her on. Not the worst card to have, and at least she does provide a board changer as well as the haste, so there's at least some value in that active as well. But again, it's nothing truly exceptional nor special at this point in time. Like, it's like, at this point in time, you think about it, like, the future Dante and Remu team, which I kind of alluded to earlier in the video, their subs are going to consist of, like, Paulone, Duval, Grandis, and Amaterasu for healing. And if you think about it, Leyland would have to compete against basically these three cards. And can she really outpace any of them? The answer is no, unfortunately. So, again, like, you're okay of a card, you're just not going to be replacing any other current options. In terms of her weapon assist, she has a single skill bind resist and an L awakening. And skill bind resist is only truly relevant for transforming teams because transforming teams often do not have skill bind resist pre transform. So, in the context of Alt Arena 4 or Arena 6, there is a preemptive skill bind on floor 1. And if those skills get bound, you are dead because you will never transform and 
that's the end of it. So having a weapon assist like this can help you solve those problems. And a single L is always going to be helpful. Like having one L anywhere on your team is meaningful because you can remove those locked orbs without using an active skill. In addition to that, you get the tri-color board change, well, sorry, a four elemental board changer. So Leyland's Firewood Light plus Hard Orbs now, as well as a single turn of haste. So it's one effective skill boost. The main drawback of this weapon assist is Karibo's weapon assist is basically a direct upgrade. It has two skill binder assists and the same L. Like it's kind of weird. Like it this it's like this card is so similar, but like the, it, it's not better. Like usually you think like a card is released and then they release a card that's just similar but better. But in the case of us, it was the reverse. We got Karibo first, like six months ago or so. So like even if I had this weapon assist, I would still be sticking with my Karibo. And again, it like the value of this weapon assist definitely hinges on whether or not you own Karibo or not. And then I think lastly for the five, no, second lastly for the five star cards is Shinji and can't pronounce that name, unfortunately. Unit 13. So Unit 13 in their base form has four skill boosts or two if you take the tape Super Awakening, but you also have seven combo, 10 combo, and co-op boost. But at the same time, if you don't play co-op, that co-op boost is kind of wasteful. And having a row and a TPA is kind of counterintuitive. It's like, you're kind of reminding me of like the old Lakshmi. You had like a bit of every awakening, but you didn't really do that much of anything in particular. So it's kind of expected that a bottom rarity, well, a lower rarity card has some dead awakening, so to speak. But at the same time, you can definitely utilize them for your mono water teams if, or even just rainbow teams, if you can fit them on because they have strong damage output, especially in co-op mode. And their active skill provides you with an attack and an RCV buff of three times. So sizable buff values, and that will obviously overwrite any existing debuff. And even if your team does not have any attackers or machines, the attack buff will still overwrite debuffs. But the problem is, like I said, there are several dead awakenings. And just saying several dead awakenings is not something you want to hear when you're trying to find, like, min max your team overall. But thankfully, their weapon assist is actually quite powerful. So their weapon assist provides you with two water rows, so obviously helping mono water teams, an attack wall below 50%, so the owning card now has two times personal damage, and the active skill is what really sets them apart. They get four times boost for attacker and machine types, may or may not be relevant, still overwrites any attack debuff, and you are able to bypass damage absorption shields and attribute absorbs. So you can counter damage absorb and color absorb, as well as attack debuffs, all in one active skill pretty powerful overall because in Alterina 4 there are many spawns that have these mechanics like if you face Noah Dragon this one active seal counters everything about Noah Dragon you overwrite the attack debuff you cancel out his damage absorb if you didn't find Noah Dragon and you found no Yomi Dragon instead you counter out his color absorb just make sure you actually use this on the turn where you've pushed his super resolve. Don't use it on turn one, use it on turn two after you hit his super resolve or her super resolve and then you can overcome them. So with this weapon assist, you can have options, especially for your mono water teams. And at least from a personal note for myself, I utilize Uruka's weapon assist for my Yomi Norza team. But if I were to acquire this card, I would swap that for this weapon assist because the rows synergize a little bit better. I have kind of excessive numbers of orb enhances at this point in time. That attack wall below 50% will add meaningful damage to my Yomi, who does actually hit quite hard. And I would now actually have a color absorb on my team somewhere. I never had a color absorb beforehand, so this can definitely solve some of those problems if I don't find if I do not find Noah Dragon and find Yomi Dragon afterwards, it will make my life easier overall. So a powerful weapon assist overall. And even if you can't utilize the water rows, that two times personal damage when you're below half health will be meaningful and add up, especially you put this on top of a damage oriented card. And lastly, for the five star cards, we have Triple A. I don't know which name I'm supposed to actually utilize, but Triple A. And Triple A sadly does not bring much to the table. They have a bunch of TPA and a bunch of VDP. Like I said, these are awakenings that don't really have good synergy with each other. You need 13 orbs to really capitalize upon it. It's just impractical. Like the active skill is a double fire orb maker that removes hearts in one turn in haste. It's nothing special. This is a tremendously old card, unfortunately. In terms of their weapon assist, they have a single attack wall above 80%. And then they change the top row to fire and then three turns of recovering 50% of your max health. So a single attack wall above 80% is nothing to sing home about. Like it is not a special awakening. Like it just, it exists. Like it's 
commonplace, it's not that special. And the active skill, while you do get an instantaneous row making, the auto heal is probably not going to be that helpful, with the exception of certain setups in your farming content. Let's say you're playing a dungeon and you know there are multiple preemptives in the dungeon, and you're obviously wanting to swipe your way as fast as possible. You can generate the row of fire, swipe it, it will heal you 50% of your max health, which would normally have not occurred, and then you can potentially tank subsequent preemptives. I feel like it's a relatively niche usage for it overall, but it's something just to be aware of. Now we come to the four star cards, and for the most part, these are relatively disastrous. And even though they do have super resist, like I said, if they are not bringing anything else but that single super resist, as soon as you find another alternative, you will drop them like it's hot so quickly and utilize that alternative. So even with that in mind, I don't think it's worth new players pursuing these cards because it's going to only temporarily put a fill a hole in your monster box short term. It's like a very bad, it's like a small band-aid that's already peeling off. It's barely doing its job, it's just the bare minimum, but it's going to be ripped off right away. So, with that in mind, let's take a look at the cards. And with that speech, this is the only truly great card from the bottom rarity. Because, well, they do have that super blinders, which is useful, but they have five skill boosts. Their other awakenings are a bit questionable, but it's five skill boosts with a five turn base active skill. So we basically have just arrived at a whale door, but this is a much lower investment whale door. Remember, you are getting some free rolls in this event. And if you do acquire this card here, you can utilize them instead of whale door because you get the same five skill boost, you have the five turn base cooldown, and you have a skill binder resist, which is something whale door did not have, and super blind. Like, it's just a little bit more than a whale door, which is pleasant. Like, I'll take it. Like, it's not going to break the game, so to speak. If it had six skill boosts, woo, that would be a different story, but five is still great, and it's just an alternative to whale door, and it takes less effort to skill up. By comparison, Welder requires many more skill ups, if I'm not mistaken. Now we come to the much lower stuff, like they have super poison resist, but this active skill does not accomplish much. Two turns of 50% damage reduction, okay. You have no skill boost, you have a bunch of auto heals, like this is not going to accomplish much of anything. Like I said, as soon as you get something else that can cover poison resist, you're going to switch this card out. And that's going to be the case for most of the cards, except for this unit here, I feel. Because at least with Mary and Eva, unit 8, you do have a bunch of wood rows, a bit of orb enhance, some personal damage when you match a 3x3 box of hearts and wood and like I feel like maybe it could scrape by for mono wood teams maybe I'm just like giving it too much credit maybe it's really not that good because there's no skill boost or skill binder resist but at the same time I guess there's no mono wood transforming cards so to speak maybe I'm giving it too much credit and I'm just thinking it's better than it is for Ray temp name I don't know what the temporary name is supposed to be otherwise but they have six auto heal awakenings and super poison resist. Maybe those six auto heal awakenings are going to come in handy for certain cheesing builds. Maybe it will. I don't really utilize cheesing strategies that often, but it's unique. There are only five total cards in the game of six auto heal awakenings, so I guess that does give it a little bit of something unique and special. And it does have a super poison resist, which is never going to be a bad thing, but. I feel it's going to be difficult to find a true usage, but at least it has a little bit of something nothing else has. Uh, unit 2, they have Super Jammer. They don't do really much of anything else. I, I'm not impressed with this card. Like, a bunch of TPA, like, it's not going to find a home. It doesn't even have physical typing. It wouldn't even help Grigory transform anyways. There's no skill boost or skill binder resist. And the active skill, like, it does give you a little bit of attack boost and a change the world active, but... Change the world like it can overcome spinners, but we have many ways to overcome spinners. There are ways to lock the board. There are obviously other change the worlds. There is going to be a future rem you can counter spinners, but for the most part, if you're a brand new account who has not much available, you're probably not going to even be encountering a spinner until much later on when your monster box has solutions. And then lastly, we come to Mark 06, and they have a super blind resist, I guess three skill boosts, but like... Uh, you're not doing much of anything like it's going to be replaced so quickly unfortunately so do i plan to roll and my dream rolls the answer is i do not plan to roll in the eva collab because i will not gain much value overall like the bottom rarity cards like having an alternative to wilder would be nice but i am able to farm razuels and i have two max sealed razuels and like i do have solutions for skill boosts and short cooldowns so like 
it does. Like, it doesn't provide me enough value. So 50% of the rolls by default are not going to help me. Many of the other cards of the higher rarities will still not help me. So it's a small amount of cards that will help me. And because of that, I don't think it's worth rolling just because my monster box is reasonably developed. And that still should be the case for even less developed monster boxes. Because like I said, the bottom rarity cards, you will outgrow them quite quickly. But either way, it's still fun to dream and think about. And for my dream 7-star card, well, Shinji and Rei are just really the default choice. They're the only one. I have to pick them. And they are a good card as well. For six star cards, I feel like Mira would definitely open up the most possibilities for my monster box because I do not have Fagan Rise weapon assist, so I don't have the spiciest cloud resist solutions available. And with this, with the future Samurai 3 weapon assist, I will have creative ways to overcome cloud resist plus 100 resist from a different metric. I just feel like it's going to add the most to my monster box overall. For the five star cards, as mentioned, Shinji and Kaoru. Their weapon assist is a damage absorb counter, a color absorb counter. They provide personal damage for the owning card when below 50% and two water rows. Powerful weapon assist overall would definitely be a boom to my Norza Yomi teams. And then finally for the four star card, the alternative to Whale Door is going to be the one that I'm going to pick because, well, I, I'll take it. It's different. It like it, It's a lower investment card. I don't need to skill it up. And it technically has a different color than Whale Door. So if I had too many light cards or I needed to cover dark, it just gives me a little bit of flexibility. So... In conclusion, the EVA collab is, like, it does have some strong cards, but the value within it is sprinkled heavily at the top, which have quite poor rolling rates, and for the most part, the bottom rarity cards, which comprise over half of the rolling pool, are going to be disappointing for the most part. So, with that in mind, I personally do not plan on rolling outside of the free rolls, but with that being said, let me know what you think about this event in the comments below. Do you think it's actually worth rolling in it? And if you did roll, what was your reason or justification for doing so? Either way, hopefully you all have a fantastic day. I wish you all the best luck in your own pad adventures, and happy puzzling.